Okay, thank you very much, and um, good morning, everybody. My name is Kunwati Sambongiwat. Um, today, I'm going to talk about Python for life science, and a bit about my myself. Um, currently, I'm a software develop developer and working on a bioinformatics project with uh, scientists at Chulalongkorn University. But before that, I was a faculty member at uh, KMUTNB, KMITL, and KMUTT. And so, as you can see, my background is in computing. So, um, today's topic, uh, my, I, I have three goals for, for today's talk. Um, first, I, I would like to talk about why I think it is uh, currently, it now is the uh, quite an exciting time to work on uh, uh, bioinformatics or um, life science. And the second goal in this talk is I, I would like to share with you the, um, the, the key concepts. Uh, if you would like to uh, start working on this field that you need to know. And then the third goal is um, I would like to uh, share with you about my uh, observations based on my experience on uh, working in um, this field for um, not so long, just two or three years, about the key issues uh, in doing bi biological data science okay, from, the, from a perspective perspective of a computer scientist. Okay. Um, so let me start with the, the reason why I think uh, now is the very um, exciting time to work on this field. So lab science I, I currently is already um, a big data science. And I would like to show uh, two evidence that um, um, to evidence that um, is a kind of a signal that uh, life science is going to be um, big data science. Okay. Uh, the first one is the, the phenomenon that we have explosion of genomic data. And in this slides, I show you uh, two graphs. The first one, okay, on the top here, um, uh, the, the blue graph on the top, we uh, plot the, um, the cost per genome, okay? The cost of uh, reading genomic data from a living organism, okay? And as you can see, the cost, the, the green line dropped uh, dramatically uh, starting around 2008, okay? And uh, from this graph, uh, the, the, the key message here is that first in year 2002, we have uh, completed the human genome. Okay? And at that time, the cost of sequencing human uh, genomic data is uh, very expensive, right? Almost uh, more than 100 million US dollar. Okay? But then, um, during 2002 to 2004, um, the cost, the cost per genome, um, reduced linearly, and if you can see the white line here, the white line, the white line is the plot of the Moore laws, which governing the the advancement in computing power. Okay, so um, as you can see the the Advancement in uh, sequencing uh, technology has led to uh, this point during 2008 and 2009, where um, the cost per genome dropped um, faster than Moore's law, meaning that uh, computing power cannot keep up with the, the rates, the growth rates of the genomic data. So. Um, and currently, we can uh, read the human genome at the cost of about one thousand US dollars, which is uh, 
not so expensive anymore. Okay, and we are seeing ten uh, at a factor of ten times yearly growth rate of genomic data. Okay, and um, so that is the first evidence we have explosion of genomic data. Secondly, um, um, this data I obtained from a paper um, um, by a, research, a researcher with they try to project uh, the cost, the, the estimates of German genomic data size. And as you can see, they compare the rate of growth of genomics data with astronomy, astron astronomic data from astronomy, astronomy and Twitter data and YouTube data. And so the conclusion from, from this research is that um, genomic data will be uh, on par with the data from astronomy, generated from astronomy, Twitter, and YouTube, or, or more than that. So um, we are going to have a lot of genomic data, OK? And then um, having a big data is, is, is not enough. Uh, we, we need to, uh, in order to decide to whether we should work on anything, we should look whether our work is going to have impact to, 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 to the society. And I, I would like to argue that um, um, biological data science will, have, will be having a um, huge impact on the society. And I would, I would like to give an example of uh, a project that I have been working with the scientists at Chulalongkorn University. So we are working on the genomic data uh, sequence from uh, shrimp, okay, uh, black black tiger shrimp, okay. And shrimp industry in Thailand is quite a big industry. So uh, one fifth of uh, the, the production of shrimp in in this world. Is, comes from Thailand, and 629,000 laborers uh, are being employed by the trim industry in Thailand, as much as 40%. And this has a, a large, uh, a very big impact, not only the, the industry, but also the, the laborers working in, in this industry. Okay. So, um, in co collaboration with the scientists at Chulalongkorn University, I uh, have developed a, a, a tool, a software programs that uh, will help them to analyze, to, to store and analyze um, biological data. And so uh, one example here is uh, we call it a CUMIR, which is uh, a program written using Python that we use to analyze the microRNA, okay? And and, we, and microRNA is one of um, a kind of uh, biological molecule that uh, is very important, um, play a very crucial role in uh, disease, um, in, in trim, okay? And um, with this program, uh, the scientists can uh, be more productive because uh, the time we, we can reduce the time and cost that the scientists need to, to do the experiment by uh, using our program to help uh, screening uh, or pinpoint the 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 the, the, the microRNA molecules that is uh, um, has the highest probability of um, causing disease, okay? And so this is one example that I, I would like to uh, raise here of the impact of um, biological data science, okay? And there are also currently many emerging applications in this area that I think uh, uh, has a promising future. Uh, for example, 
uh, currently we have a handheld DNA analyzer. Uh, I think you, you, you might have already known about this, uh, Oxford Nanopore, that we can, is a kind of a portable devices that we can use to uh, uh, sequence the DNA from, any, from living organism, uh, first from plants and animals, as well as from human. Okay. And another application that I think is um, very interesting to me is um, here about uh, um, a project and this a new company that uh, trying to allow us to um, range or sell our DNA data, okay. By, uh, to the pharma pharmaceutical company as, as the research labs, okay? And uh, this uh, platform is going to uh, work on top of the uh, um, uh, blockchain technology, okay? So this is the, um, the driving forces that I think uh, makes uh, biological data science a promising field. Now, um, for those of you that uh, would like to enter this field, I would like to share about uh, the, the key ideas or concepts that you need to understand before, um, at least you need to understand, it, it, understand these concepts in order to start working on this kind. This. So um, the, the core concept in working with the genomic data is the central dogma of molecular biology, okay? And this dogma says that uh, all information in, in a living cell um, is kept or stored in a DNA. So DNA is like a, a storage of our genetic data. And to access this information, the DNA, the, our body, our cell, needs to uh, convert or transform DNA into RNA. And, and the vocabulary that uh, the, the biologists use to uh, describe this process is they will say we need to uh, DNA um, um, transcribe DNA into the RNA molecules. And from RNA, we, uh, RNA will be translated into a working protein which is the molecule that uh, like a working horse in, in our body, okay? And that is the key concept. Now, um, the types, the key uh, types of biological data that um, we, we need to work with uh, consists of um, DNA, RNA protein sequences. The second type is gene expression data. And the third type is networks, pathway data. And the last one that I think is what, uh, one of key data structures, uh, data types in biology, for biology is uh, gene ontology. So I'm going to uh, briefly walk through these data types here. Um, first, DNA. Um, so DNA, is uh, in in uh, biological form is a double helix uh, structure, right? And but in computer we represent DNA with uh, four characters A, C, T, and G. Okay, and usually we we need to work with DNA sequence. And uh, for example, we 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 would like to try to uh, compare. Uh, DNA sequences between different uh, organisms, okay? And the second uh, sequence, biological sequence data type is RNA. So RNA, um, RNA is um, a single strand uh, structure in a uh, living cell. And the, why the, the role of DNA is to store data RNA is quite an active element in, in, in our body because RNA is 
is the, the molecules that will be used to uh, produce proteins, okay, which is the, uh, where most of the, the functions in the living organism uh, are, are being done. And for RNA, uh, we also represented RNA sequence data using uh, four alphabets, uh, A, C, U, and G, okay? And the next sequence data that, uh, that, we, we, uh, that is important when we work in gen with genomic data is protein, okay? So protein is uh, a molecule that uh, does most of the job in our uh, living organisms. And we represent protein using uh, 20 uh, characters. And each character represents uh, amino acid, okay? So um, three types of sequence. Next is uh, gene expression data. So why sequence data is the, the information about the molecules uh, in, in living body. Gene expressions is the information about the, the um, genes, about the, the expression of genes in, in our cells. And the data structures that we use to represent gene expression is metrics, okay, or, or tables, okay. So while well, each rows, rows and columns, um, each cell represents the expression level of each uh, genes, okay. The next data types that uh, is a key um, data structure for uh, genomic data is networks and pathway. So there are two uh, important um, network in, in network data in um, bioinformatics. The first one is network constructed, constructed from um, core expression um, data, from gene core expression data. And each node in, in this network is gene. And the connection between each node represents the interaction, that there exists interaction between each gene. And the second type of network that is uh, um, ubiquitous in this field is protein-protein interaction network. And so each node is uh, representing the protein, where the connections represent the, uh, the interaction or that two proteins working together to complete some function in the living organism. The last data types that uh, uh, we are going to see uh, a lot when we work in this field is gene ontology, where um, uh, gene ontology defines the um, relationship between uh, gene functions, okay? And those are the important concepts and data types or biological data types that uh, we need to know in order to start working on this field. Now, um, next I would like to briefly uh, talk about the Python tools and library that are available uh, for working with this data type. So uh, usually we use a Jupyter Notebook for collaboration between our colleagues, between computer scientists and uh, the, the biologists. And of course, we use SciPy, NumPy, Matplotlib, and Pandas to, to, to do the data analysis. Scikit-learn and Scikit-image for, um, Scikit-learn for do machine learning and analyze our data, and Scikit-image for generate the, the, the image from, from the biology data. And we also um, uh, use a lot of uh, functions from RPy2, where we need to interface or we call functions from R length because many uh, libraries in, in this field is available only in R. So, Uh, 
Yes. For me, uh, because for me, Python is much easier than R. <laughs> and uh, another, another reason is um, if, if, but I, I haven't included the, the, the graph plotting the growth rate of the popularity of R in this R and Python in this field here. But uh, the current data shows that more scientists currently uh, has turned to Python in, in working. I think for statisticians, they're still mainly working in R. Right? But for, for other uh, subfield, right, not uh, statistician, Python is, uh, might be a better choice because it is easier to learn and, and master. But you, you are right, most of the libraries uh, related to statistics still, we need R. But, well, um, for the situation here that we have in, in our academic field is um, more scientists uh, has uh, uh, less experience, expo less exposure to programming and they found it much easier to, to start from Python. Yeah, so, um, so here, our pipeline includes our, our Py2, right? And also, uh, we, we need a BioPython and scikit-bio library. Um, I, I included here the sample programs in Python that we, we use NumPy to store our gene expression data, and uh, we, we use our Py2 to call the, the function uh, available in Bioconductor. And I'm not going to going into the details here because I, I would like to finish my talk by discussing about the key issues in doing bio, biological data science from the perspective of computer scientists. Um, um, so I think um, the, the first uh, barriers for us to enter this field is we, we lack domain knowledge. And, uh, there is no other way that uh, we need to study. And I have included uh, uh, studying references in, in the slides. If you are interested here, uh, you can check my slides later. And the second issue is that I think um, is, um, uh, will, will be very crucial and, and we need the contributions from Python com community is um, in, in this field, biological, we have biology. We have um, uh, many data formats for many many things. So data interoperability will be a very important issue here, right? And another problem is um, um, I, I forgot to because I just updated my slide. And, and this is not the latest version. The, the next problem that I think will be very important is the interoperability between, at the level of language, between R and Python and other uh, uh, programming languages. Because um, as uh, the audience from the, the comments from the audience, uh, the populations, the, the programming language used in this field we have R, we have Python, we have Po, many languages. So it is important to have a solution for interoperability between different languages. And this problem that I think will be, is important that we need to solve is, um, well, like, like other machine learning project or data science project, large proportion of time spent in in, in, in data processing and wrangling. And, and we need to come up with a, a better solution uh, for, to help uh, uh, speed up the process of biological data science. And the last point that I would like to uh, make here is um, one of the reasons that I think makes uh, working in this field uh, 
challenging is because um, the most users, the different laboratories, they will need um, a different solu uh, some uh, kind of a custom customized software solutions for for uh, different labs are uh, necessary. Okay, and I, I think I am running out of time. So I would like to finish my talk here. And if you have any questions, please.